Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Rich Reviews and welcome back to another episode in Horology where I talk about the watches in my watch collection. Yes, this is the box pertaining to the actual timepiece that I'm going to be talking about today. Today we're going to talk about the Omega 50th Anniversary Speedmaster Pro Special Edition. I'm wearing it at the moment, so I'll just show you the actual timepiece. I bought this watch in 2008-2009, directly from an authorised dealer. And this is the only Speedmaster that has the black enamel dial. If you want to be able to tell the difference between this and other Speedmasters, that very, very quickly then, first of all, you can look at the numbering on the dial because it's a special edition. So it's a numbered special edition, limited edition. Um, and you can look at that, the actual dial because it's the only Speedmaster with a black enamel dial. So I won't go too much into the actual technology and to the design of the actual Speedmaster with regards to the bezel, because most of you know about the bezel. Uh, the Speedmaster was designed um, around timing items and specifically the Speedmaster was used for the moon landings. The original Speedmasters were worn by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Look, what a lot of people don't actually realise is actually the first Speedmaster on the moon wasn't Neil Armstrong's. Neil Armstrong left, had to leave it in the actual landing module because of issues that they had with the actual clock in the landing module not working correctly so they actually had, had to leave his timepiece in the landing module and it was actually Buzz Aldrin's Speedmaster that was actually the first um, Speedmaster that was on the moon. But this Speedmaster is the Omega 50th anniversary, it's 42 mil lug to lug. I'd say I purchased it in circa 2009, it's the anniversary of actually the Omega Speedmaster moon watches and it's a very special version. It has the it, this particular one is a limited edition. This particular one is numbered 0423 out of 1957. Obviously the date 1957 being very pertinent to the actual um, Speedmaster moon watches. Now Speedmasters have a very bizarre ID numbers. Anybody who knows Omegas uh, knows that the identification numbers for Omega watches are very convoluted. For example, and I'll have to read this off a cue card, um, this particular reference number is 311.33.42.50.01.001.001. Now who's going to remember that straight off the cuff? You're just not going to, are you? Even the keenest watch buff would never remember that ID. It's just a crazy reference number, but that's how Omega um, number their watches. This Speedmaster, say off on the bezel, um, it has the standard tachometer bezel. So if you start the watch, if you start the stopwatch, then um, if you're timing a vehicle over a certain distance, um, then you can actually see the actual speed they went. So if they traveled um, from that start point to this particular point, um, and they arrived at, that, at, uh, at a particular point down here when you stopped the stopwatch, if they arrived here, then the actual speed that they were traveling at would be read off the tachymeter dial. Now this Speedmaster is water resistant to 100 meters. It has the 3201 movement, which has a power reserve of 55 hours. It's a manual wind as all proper moon Speedmasters are. Um, so you actually just wind it manually via the crown and then you can put it out to the second position to set the actual time. It has hacking and when you pull the crown out it has hacking uh, to be able to stop the seconds hand to enable you to set the time very accurately. A very important aspect of this Speedmaster is actually the movement. Um, when I say that I mean the decoration of the movement. Now it's what they call a sapphire sandwich. So on the back it's actually got a sapphire clear case back. And this case back um, shows off the movement in, in all its splendor. It has a vertical, has a vertical clutch chronograph, um, which runs off a column wheel uh, mechanisms, which you can, you can tell that when you actually click the start and stop. So if I put it up to the microphone, you'll hear it. Very pronounced. You can always tell a, a column wheel chronograph by the, uh, by the way it uh, is very definitive in its actions when you when you start and stop and reset the chronograph. The movement on this, the 3201 movement on this has a 
rhodium plated movement with Geneva waves decoration, circular graining and gold plated engraving. So again, you can see this on the back. It's, it's very clearly decorated. It's a beautiful movement which is, can, be, can be evidently seen through the sapphire case back. So on the back, if you read across the actual um, circumference of the case back, it tells you that it's the 50th anniversary Moonwatch Speedmaster. It's got the coaxial movement and it tells you the actual numbered version that this is. So it tells you that this is numbered 0423 of 1957. So it's the 423rd in 1957 total editions of this timepiece. So it's quite rare and as I say it's the only Speedmaster that has the black enamel dial. Moving on a little bit to the actual servicing of this watch because it's quite pertinent. The, the This watch has actually been serviced once so I bought it in I believe it's in 2009 late 2008 to early 2009 I bought it new from the authorized dealer. Um, this has had one service the, the reason that motivated me towards getting it serviced was because and within the first warranty period, the crown failed and it had to have the crown replaced. And then just outside of warranty, when it was coming up to its first service period, it actually had the crown fail again. So it's had two new crowns on this watch. So um, I don't know whether that bodes something for the 3201 movement, I don't know. But uh, I asked them if it was a weakness on the, on the movement and they said no. But um, that, that doesn't bode very well and I never used the watch very much. Um, I circulate my timepieces and this doesn't get that much wrist presence so it, I was really surprised that the actual crown mechanism failed twice but it just is what it is I guess. Unfortunately on the second time I had to get the, the watch service to get the crown repaired and replaced um, which I believe was around £500. So that's the that's the actual timepiece. We'll, we'll put the timepiece to one side for a minute and just put it back on my wrist actually because that prevents watches being scratched. The best way to stop a watch from being scratched is to put it back on your wrist. You put it down anywhere on the hard surface unless you put it on a soft cloth like this, it's gonna scratch It's going to, or it's gonna wrap upon itself. The bracelet is gonna bang on the back and I know that they're made of quite hard steel and you've got sapphire crystals etc but you just want to avoid them getting scratched any, any way you can. Now the, the 50th anniversary um, 3201 um, Speedmaster comes in this very elaborate box. Now I'm gonna make sure I don't totally obliterate the actual the, the um, screen with this, but I'll slide this out so you can see. So first of all, you have this very large exterior box with, with a lid and this lid has only just Omega on the top. Omega are well known for packaging their Speedmasters and a lot of their, their other timepieces as well in this manner. I believe this is, this is the biggest packaging box that Omega have ever provided for a Speedmaster. It's very elaborate and it's very specialized. I just put this to one piece. From here, you can actually see that you've got a soft cloth here that covers the actual box, it protects the box. We'll put this to one side. It's so large, it'll take up so much space. And then I'll turn this round so you can see to the actual camera. But here you have on the top the Speedmaster logo on this beautiful hard wood box. This is a beautiful piece of engineering, this, this box. Very, very specialised probably find this box is worth half as much as the actual Speedmaster in itself. And then on the actual side of the box, you can see um, different dates on each of the feet, on the bottom legs, on the bottom of the legs, you can actually see different dates. I don't actually know what those dates relate to. I feel that obviously they're pertinent dates in the Speedmaster um, history, but uh, you have 1970, you have 1969, 1957, 2007. So that must be when certain pieces were dropped. So as you can see on the front engraved plate, it says 50th anniversary Omega Speedmaster. Now if I open up the box, I'll just put it at an angle so you can see. Again, very well engineered hinges. You've got the front 
presentation area, um, which is made of this, uh, like, um, I don't know if it's leather or plastic, but it's a cushioned area. And you have the actual main cushion that the actual, stuck a bit in it, it's quite tight. So this is the main cushion that the actual timepiece is wrapped around. So obviously the timepiece is actually presented in this manner in the box. That was nice. <laughs> That's how the timepiece is presented in the box. The clasp is actually very sweet, by the way. It has a, a double double pin release, which is uh, and the single pin patch on the deploying clasp. So it's, uh, it's very sweet in how it operates. Now, if, looking at the box, why is it so big, you wonder? Well, you take the, the top presentation inlay section out, and this is always very tricky to take out. So oh, it's actually coming out very easily this time. So usually it's quite tight. But you see here, you have a plethora of tools that are provided with the 50th anniversary Speedmaster. So first of all, you have a black crocodile leather strap with a deployment buckle. I've never used this, but it's a beautiful real leather crocodile strap with a deployment buckle, as I say. In addition, you have a 10 times loop for looking at your watch in detail. So the first tool here, you have the screwdriver. Now this is a very useful screwdriver because it has a bearing on the back. So you can actually put this into your hand like so and undo the screws. It's, it's a very precise screwdriver, very, very well engineered. And you can change the heads with a little screw slot there, which actually holds the, the screwdriver heads in place. So you can actually swap out the heads if you want to as well. So it's a very well engineered screwdriver. I use this quite a lot whenever I'm changing, um, whenever I'm sizing straps or bracelets, whenever I'm sizing bracelets, I always use a screwdriver because it's very precise, very en well engineered uh, screwdriver point and the actual bearing on the back makes it so it fits really nicely in your hand and allows you to unscrew and tighten up um, this, the very small screws within the bracelets. Now here we have a pin buckle removal tool. So it has a very, very small end and a very small depression in the end that allows you to get right in and get underneath the actual pin buckles and actually lever out the pin buckle um, so to actually prevent you from scratching anything. So it gets, gets right underneath the outside of the part, not actually touching the inner part where the actual buckle is pressed in, in into the actual locating slots or holes and allows you to lever out the outside casing and pull the pin buckle out. It's very well engineered again. And again, this has uh, a nice fitment into the actual hand so it's very well designed. All useful tool sets will come with a useful pair of tweezers so it's a very good set of engineered tweezers there. I nearly stabbed myself there with them. <laughs> and as I said you have small little screwdrivers here which, uh, which are very cool. Now interestingly enough these hold various different bits and pieces now it's going to be a surprise to me now which one what's in this because um there we go i couldn't remember to be honest but we've got different size pin buckles sorry different size pins so different size bracelet pins here so depending on what bracelet you're going to be using you've got new bracelet pins as well now i believe one of these other ones i believe one of these other ones may have some differing tools in there yeah, here you go. So we've got different tool heads here, which is um, very useful. So we've got different screwdriver heads and various other different heads here. You can actually switch them around, I believe, as well. So you can swap them, swap them around, and they become a different tool, which is quite useful. So they've uh, really gone overboard with this, with the packaging, with the tool set on this, on this um, Speedmaster. Incredible presentation box, absolutely incredible. Also, you get, I mean, this is the spare, this is the spare links and the bracelet that was taken out to size it for me. Obviously, you've got your different tags. A little, they provide you a nice little Omega soft cloth. And you have a beautiful little a leather wallet here with all your different documentation on the, for the Speedmaster, all the different cards and your pictogram cards, which is quite cool. And we've got the, <laughs> we've got a Cassie trying to get in on the on the deal now. 
So she's smelling the box for the first time. You know what cats are like. When they smell something different, they want to know everything about it. So, uh, so yeah, but yeah, you've got all these, all these lovely, pitch, lovely, all these lovely pictogram cards, and all your different, all my receipt, and you've actually got a, um, I've got my repair documentation there for when it was serviced, and I believe you have a first purchase certificate with the watch as well, um, which is here somewhere, and obviously the manual. I mean, obviously this is for different languages, but yeah, I don't think anybody's ever read that. <laughs> So this is the uh, so this is the review for the for the Speedmaster. Um, so apart from the the crown having failed a couple of times, yeah, that's expensive, especially you know having to have the watch serviced. But at least you know it covered off the full service as well as having the crown replaced. Uh, apart from that, the watch has been fantastic. Being the three two zero one coaxial movement, it's very accurate, and um, you know with the black enamel dial, it's um, very unique. It's, very, it's a very unique Speedmaster, and one that will stay in my collection. I can't see me ever selling this. I've actually bought it on a whim. Um, the the, the authorised dealer that um, that got in touch with me, or, or I actually did a scan and found it at one of the authorised dealers, but I wasn't specifically looking for this timepiece. I was just looking for another timepiece. I had a Rolex Daytona at the time, and that was my only other watch. And this uh, this actually started the watch collection in earnest. I was just going to have the one timepiece, which was the Daytona. Um, but uh, I looked around for another timepiece and found this, and then this started off the actual watch collection. And from then I went on and, and built out the rest of the watch collection, but mostly in later years. That's the um, review, and so, so that's providing you some details of my Omega 50th anniversary timepiece from my collection. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Um, please make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications so you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. We're pushing hard to scale the channel up to a minimum of a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. So please, if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. And um, please share the channel as well amongst your friends. Thanks a lot for watching guys. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you in the next video. There's some really good content coming along. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye on the channel for great future content to come. Thanks guys, take care.